Welcome to Master Math series on financial literacy for teenagers. In this series, we're going to try to explain some of the financial principles that you'll need to understand to navigate your world for the rest of your life. When you come to a you try it problem, hit the pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to my answer. I hope you have a really good time today. We have a very interesting subject for you today. We're going to talk about interest and the distinction between simple interest and compound interest. Now, if you don't know what interest is now, you, you'll find out soon enough. You really can't live your life very easily without dealing with the bank. You may use the bank's credit card to pay for a dinner. Or you may borrow some money from the bank to buy your first car. Or you might establish a savings account at the bank to pay for college. In any of these transactions with the bank, whether you're borrowing money or putting money into a savings account, there's going to be interest involved. Well, what is interest? Well, one way to think of interest is that it's the cost of renting money. If you use a credit card to pay for a meal, the bank is going to lend you or rent you that money. They're going to let you use their money to pay for that meal. And they're going to want you to pay it back. And while you've got it, they're, you're renting it and they're going to charge you interest. Or, if you go to the bank and want to set up a savings account, what's really happening, happening is you're lending the bank some money. You're letting the bank use your money for a while. It's still your money, but the bank gets to use it. And in exchange for that, they're going to pay you rent for that money or interest. If we're going to understand interest, there's some other words that we're going to have to become familiar with. The first is principal. The principal is the amount of money that you borrowed or the amount of money that's been lent. If you borrow $2,000 to buy a car, the $2,000 is the principal. The next term you need to be familiar with is rate. And that's just interest rate. But it's important that you understand that it's a rate per some period of time. For instance, if they quoted you 18% interest, that probably means 18% per year not 18% per month, because 18% per month would be a whole lot more expensive than 18% per year. So the rate has to have a time period associated with it. And then time is the amount of time you've had the money. And it has to be in the same units as, as the rate. If the rate is 18% per year, then your time has to be expressed in years. If the time were six months, you'd have to convert it to 0.5 years. Well, let's call interest I. Let's call principal P. Let's call rate R. And we'll call time T. If you want to calculate how much your interest expense would be, you'll use this formula. The interest equals the principal times the rate times the time. The interest paid equals the amount of money you've borrowed or you've lent times the interest rate times the amount of time that that interest is to cover. You try this one. Hit your pause button. Try this problem. And when you get done with it, hit your forward key to move on to the answer. You borrow $50 
$50. That's the principal. That's the amount borrowed. And you have to pay interest of 15%. Now, if they don't say otherwise, that means 15% per year. And by the way, you can't use 15% when you're calculating. You need to tr convert that to a decimal, 0.15. You repay the loan after two years. Two years is the T, the amount of time that you've had this money out and will owe interest over. How much interest do you owe? Well, the interest equals the principal times the rate times the amount of time. So the interest equals $50 times 0.15 times 2, or $15. There's one last term that I need to introduce you to, and that's balance, and we'll call balance B. Balance is the amount of money that's in the account or the amount of money that you're owed at any particular time in the future. You know that if you invested $50 in a savings account, you'd have more than $50 in that account after a year because you'd have earned some interest on it. And the amount of money that you had after that year would be your balance after one year. In the last problem, we borrowed $50. We paid it back plus $15 interest. So our balance before we paid it back, but after the two years was up, was $65. 65 is the amount of money that we had to pay back. That was our balance when we closed the account. Well, there's another way to calculate balance. You can use this formula. The balance equals the principal times 1 plus the rate times the amount of time that you've got the money out. In the case of borrowing $50, the principal would be 50 and then you'd multiply that 50 times 1 plus the interest rate, 0.15, times the amount of time that the money was out, or 2 years. And 50 times 1 plus 0.15 times 2 equals 65. Grandmothers are great. Yours put $400 into a savings account to help pay for your college. And that savings account was paying 4% annual interest. Annual interest means that the period of time that you need to have that money in the account to earn a full 4% is one year. The question is, after five years, what's your balance in that account? Well, hopefully you've noticed I put the critical formulas up in the upper right-hand side of the screen. And we can use that B, or balance, equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate times the period of time to figure out what the balance would be. The balance would be $400 times 1 plus 0.04 times 5. And that equals $480. Over five years, you earned $80 interest on that $400 that was put into the savings account. Well, so far we've been talking about interest, but we haven't really clarified for you that there's two kinds of interest. There's simple interest, and there's compound interest. The distinction may sound a little bit confusing to you, but it's pretty simple. Simple interest means that the interest is earned only on the principal amount. You're only going to earn interest on the am original amount that you put in to the account. However, compound interest pays you interest not only on the principal, but on any previously earned interest. Well, let's see how this might work with an example. You just have to have this fabulous fur coat that costs $500. You don't have $500, so you pay for the coat with a store charge account that charges 18% interest compounded annually. 
See the word compounded there? That means that they're going to charge you that interest not only on the principal amount, but on any interest that you already owe them. Now you make no monthly payments and no yearly payments. You make no payments, but after three years you saved enough money to pay off the loan. How much do you owe? You might be surprised. Let's calculate this interest. The formula is the balance owed equals the principal times 1 plus the rate times the period of time. So in year, run, year, year 1, your principal would be $500. That's what the coat costs. That's what you borrowed. But after a year, you'd owe them 18% interest. So to figure out what your balance was after a year, we'd multiply that $500 times 1 plus 0.18, the decimal equivalent of 18%, times 1, because it was one year of time that you'd borrowed this money for. So after one year, that coat wouldn't, you wouldn't owe $500 on that coat. You'd owe $590 on the coat. Well, how about year two? It's the same formula, except now you don't owe $500. You've got to pay interest on the interest that you've already accrued. So your principal amount is not $500. It's $590 and you're going to multiply that times 1 plus 0.18 times 1 because it's still for one additional year and that totals to $696.20 in year 3 it's the same routine except the beginning of year 3 and at the, end, at the, at the beginning of year 3 you owed $696.20 and at the end of the year three, you'd owe interest on that of 0.18 times one period. So after three years, you would owe $812.52 on that $500 coat. That interest is over half the value of the coat. Well, you've gotten yourself in a little bit of a problem. You owe the bank $700, and the bank's charging you 18% interest, 18% per year, and they're going to compound that annually. That means that after the first year, after, after each annual period of a year, they're going to start charging you interest on the interest for the previous years. Now, how much will you owe the bank after two years if you make no payments before then? Well, during year one, you'll use the formula B equals P times 1 plus RT to determine that the amount of money you owe after a year is $826. That's 700 times 1 plus 0.18 times 1. But in year two, you not only owe interest on the $700 you borrowed, but you owe interest on the interest for the first year. So your principal amount is now $826. And to figure out what you owe after that second year, you'll multiply that 826 times 1 plus 0.18 times 1, because it's only for one more year. And that'll equal $974.68. Well, that's our lesson on simple and compound interest. I hope you understand these concepts now. Let's test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and try your luck with the worksheets, quizzes, and exams you'll find under the lesson for simple and compound interest. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. And I hope you come back to see us again soon.